Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Some reviews are easy for me. A watch will arrive, I'll peel off the sticker, size it up, put it on wrist and I'll be like, I don't like that, but I like that. That's good, but that is bad. And I'll be able to make a fairly quick assessment of any areas I see as still having room for improvement. Some reviews take a while longer and I need to really get to know the watch a little better, how it wears, how it sits, how it performs, its features and functions, etc. before I can make a proper assessment. Other reviews are not so easy and this is one such review. I am struggling to find things to complain about with this Alkin Model 2. Now you saw the pop-up. This video is sponsored by Alkin. You might think therefore that my words cannot be trusted. Fair enough, but bear with me for just a minute. I'm not saying this is the best watch I've ever seen, because it isn't. I'm not even saying it's the best jewel crown diver I've seen. What I am saying is that this watch is a solid eight out of 10 in every single area. Case, crown, bracelet, clasp, crystal, all eight out of 10. Bezel, dial, loom, movement, even price, all eight out of 10. That means it's gonna be a really nitpicky moans and niggles section today. So if you like what you see, then you're not gonna be disappointed with the Alkin. If I can't find anything to moan about, then you probably won't either. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. Let's start with something interesting, or at least I think it's interesting. Over the last 18 months, I have reviewed a whole bunch of dual crown inner rotating bezel compressor style dive watches. In no particular order, those being the Phoebus Eagle Ray Compressor, the Dorenzo DRZ05, the Mitch Mason Maelstrom, the Second Hour Giant Stride, and the RZE Resolute, which was trying its best to convince you that it wasn't in fact a dive watch, it was a field watch, even though it was a dive watch. This Alkin Model 2 predates all of them. It was actually ahead of the dual crown in rotating bezel compressor case curve as it were. Now I first heard of Alkin a couple of years ago when I reviewed the Echo Neutra. Somebody in the comment section there said hey it looks like an Alkin and I googled the brand and indeed there were similarities between the two watches. But I think quite different design philosophies. Alkin are owned by Charlie Fowler. I'll leave a link to his website, obviously in the description of the video. I'll also leave a link to an interview he did with the Scottish Watches website. There was one particularly revealing sentence and I'm gonna read the first half of it. Charlie said, generally I follow the principle that a watch is finished when there is nothing left to take away. I'm sure you've heard of that philosophy, design philosophy. It's not about nothing left to add, it's about nothing left to take away. There is, however, a second half to that sentence, which is important. I will read it out later in the video. I'll tell you what's also important, price. Price is always important. These are 415 pounds, although there was a enter your email for a 20 pound discount. I'll give anybody my email for a 20 pound discount. That takes it down to 395. You'll need to work out your own taxes and shipping, etc., etc. on top of that though. As I said in the intro, I think the price is about an eight out of 10, much like the rest of the watch as well. Now an eight out of 10 means it drops a couple of points in pretty much every area. So as I'm running through it, I'll tell you the elements that I think could be improved to increase their scores. But overall, it's hard not to like this one. It's hard to find fault with this one because it is such a pure, clean and simple design watch end to end. Great set of dimensions, 41 mil in diameter, only 12.9 mil thick. Now that is impressive considering that is a piece of double domed sapphire crystal included in that measurement. It's also impressive as this is a 300 meter dive watch, not 200. 49 mil lug to lug or scraping just underneath 49, 20 mil lug width, tapering down to 18, back up to 20 at the clasp, sized up for me, seven inch wrist, just where I would expect a 41 mil diameter watch to sit, 160 grams. All stainless construction, dual screw down crown, so that is the movement crown at four o'clock and the inner rotating bezel crown up there at the two o'clock. The crowns are both good sized and nice and grippy. I already talked about the double dome sapphire crystal with a reasonable amount of anti-reflective undercoating. It is very well integrated into the case. It would have picked up a couple of extra points had it had even more anti-reflective undercoating. You can never have too much AR in my book. Bracelet is all brushed as discussed. Three link oyster style. They are separate links. They are solid links and they use screws to connect them. I had no problems getting this one sized. 
Female end links, solid end links, that is gonna help it wear well on a wide variety of wrist sizes. And like I said, drilled lugs, if you do wanna swap it out for leather at some point yourself. And the clasp is definitely an eight out of 10. That is my preferred style of clasp. You see this one popping up with various brand names on it on various micro brands over the years. I've seen it a number of times anyway. Six holes of micro adjust, it's a milled upper. Security fold over, all brushed again, double triggers, milled lower, fantastic really, optimal I think. It would have scored another couple of points here had it some on the fly micro adjustment system, but then again you don't often see on the fly micro adjust from micro brands for 400 pounds. Case back design is just as clean as the rest of the design of the watch. Exhibition style flat sapphire crystal with anti-reflective undercoating, believe it or not, so you get a good look at the Miyota contained within. Nicely etched around the outer edges, British design, 300 meters of water resistant stainless steel and sapphire crystal. Yes, indeed, that is a Miyota. It's a 9039, the no date variant of the 9015. The 9039 is another solid eight out of 10 choice. I would have awarded two more points had it had a Salita 200 or an Eta 2824, but you can't really complain about a set of figures like that, can you? 24 dual hacking and hand winding only winds in one direction, mind you, so you do get a little bit of rotor spin and rotor wobble, roughly 40 hour power reserve, running like a champ. Dial and handset, I think another solid eight out of 10, and probably this watch's best example of the less is more philosophy, a really, really clean look overall with this, I think. Now I went for the white one, they are also available in black or blue, again, less is more, only three very, very simple colorways. I went for white because I think it looks fantastic and it has a little trick up its sleeve, perhaps you can guess, I'll show you in just a couple of minutes. It is a sandwich dial, though interestingly enough, only those batons, only the hour markers are in relief. The Arabic numerals, the 12, 3, 6, and 9, are actually slightly elevated, slightly raised by printing. And in another nice touch, that is a unique typeface. Those Arabics you will not find on any other watch. They were designed just for Charlie, just for this watch. Alkin brand name, all in lowercase, above the pinion printed in black, automatic 300 meters and 985 feet, very precise, printed beneath it. Printed minute track around the outer edge and an incredibly legible handset. Arrowhead, hour hand, fence post, minute hand. The minute hand touches that minute track, as does the plain black needle second hand. No lollipop, no loom on this one, just a very slim counterbalance as well. Onto the inner rotating bezel. White triangle at 12, again, keeping that black and white theme going, and Arabics at 5, 10, 15, all the way around to 55. No minute markers, you note. Again, less is more, they have cleaned it up. That does come at the cost of a little bit of utility. I We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Overall though, it is super clean and it is super legible. And that includes after dark legibility because it's a full loom dial. Like I said, to me, it's a white dial watch with a bonus. That bonus is pretty decent loom when you switch the light off. BGW9 all over the dial and on the hands, they've gone for that double loom effect as you can see there, but no loom on the minute hand. Now watch what happens when we turn the speed up on this one. The dial fades pretty quickly to be honest, leaving the loom pip and the hour hand and the minute hand hanging on, but the second hand doesn't have any loom, it's reliable on the dial so it is not visible towards the end of the 20 minutes. And it wears very nicely indeed, sub 50 lug to lug. Nice bit of downturn from those lugs as you can see there. Decent class with heaps of micro adjust, meaning you always get the right fit. I like to wear my watches above the knuckle and quite snug, and that is no problem with this one. I do like that double dome sapphire crystal. There's a reasonable amount of AR there, keeping things super legible as discussed. Same, same from the overhead shot. Nice hand length of these ones, black on white, white on black. Yeah, no problems at all with legibility. Outside natural light, just beginning to struggle a little bit here. Like I said, a couple of extra layers of anti-reflective coating would not have gone amiss, but this black and white colorway is still gonna do you a job under most circumstances on wrist. It really does fit my average size seven inch wrist very well. A little bit smaller, no problem at all because of the female end links. A little bit bigger, I think 160 grams and 41 mil is still gonna be perfectly acceptable for a larger wrist. And the pocket shot to finish, would you believe that is a hoodie and jeans I am wearing today. No more shorts and t-shirts for the next three months, I'm afraid. Again, a little bit more flexible 
Ecto here, the AR is beginning to struggle. But let's get on with the moans and niggles section, or at least the nitpick section. No big issues with this one as discussed. I do think it is a strong offering overall. Couple of things though, couple of compromises made as part of the design. Now the inner rotating bezel, I haven't shown you the action there. It isn't ratcheting, it's smooth either way. I couldn't always get it to line up exactly on 12. Sometimes it wouldn't let me screw it in perfectly. This time it did it no problems at all, but sometimes it wouldn't let me. Now I hinted at this earlier on, no loomed lollipop on the second hand, very simple needle, and no minute markers on the first 15, perhaps 20 minutes of that inner rotating bezel, meaning, Dives, you're not really gonna be timing dives with this one. Those two objects have fallen to that less is more philosophy. After dark, as you saw at the end of the 20 minutes, the dial has gone. That means you don't have any second hand legibility whatsoever. And let's return to that quote again from Charlie and I'll read you the second half of the sentence. But if you're not careful, you can easily end up with something that feels cold and a little boring. This design is really gonna resonate with some people who prefer that simple, sleek, minimalist aesthetic. For others, it might be a little bit boring. Let's compare it to another couple of the super compressors that I referenced earlier on. Starting with the Phoebus Eagle Ray. I mean, look at this thing. It's got a fecking octopus on the dial for a start. It's got Romans, it's got that steampunk style, Fume dial, etches on the bezel. It is kind of full on in a way that the Alkin simply isn't. And then there's the second hour giant stride. Almost entirely the opposite philosophy taken by Peter Sargison. He's a kind of more is more guy. He's always piling in more textures, more angles, cantilevered indices, more colors, generally more, more, and more. And then we're back to the Alkin. Very, very different to those other two watches in comparison. Now, if this one is an eight out of 10 in every single area, that means it isn't a 10 out of 10 in any particular area. And I'm sure some people are prepared to cop the occasional six for a 10 here and there. So as much as we've talked about Charlie's less is more philosophy today, I think whether or not you like this watch comes down to your personal philosophy. Do you appreciate the aesthetic of the Alkin Model 2? Is this a watch you would happily look down at your wrist on for many years to come? Or do you find it a little bit cold and just a little bit boring? Personally, I really like the design, particularly in this black and white color, but I'm really looking forward to reading some of your comments today. So there you have it, perhaps not the most thrilling watch in the world, but if you like that super clean Euro design when everything is stripped away until only the essentials remain, where less is indeed more, then definitely check out the Alcan range. If, however, you like a compressor with a bit more oomph, then have a look at the second hour Giant Stride or the Phoebus Eagle Ray. Thanks for watching. I will see you all again in a future video.